Hi guys, so I just got done filming 10 products that I love that everyone hates. Here's its sister video. These are 10 products that everyone else seems to love, but that I hate. <laughs> I'm gonna do the usual YouTube disclaimer, which is, listen, I get it. Most people love these, but for some reason, they don't work for me. And I'm gonna try and explain why. Um, but if these are your favorite products, more power to you. I'm happiest when people find things that they like, that they super enjoy, than when you buy something and it just craps out on you. So. There's the little YouTube disclaimer out of the way. If these products work for you, that is awesome. But these are 10 products that just aren't doing it for me. The first two products are both foundations and I have found some similarities between the two of them from an ingredients perspective that now kind of act as a warning sign for me. But before we get into that, let me tell you what the heck they are. The first one is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. And then the much more expensive version that I kind of equate this to duping is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. Now, I have tried both of these foundations multiple times. They both have great shade ranges. Both of these were probably some of the most popular foundations when they launched. And I love that so many people now have an awesome drugstore foundation that works well for them. The challenge that I have with these are twofold. One, I don't feel like it ever sets down on my skin. I always feel like it's just sitting on top of things, kind of floating around. I don't know why that is. I have a friend who has both of these foundations and they work beautifully on her skin, but for some reason, and I don't know if it is just my skin type, I'm normal slash combo. I don't know if it is the skincare that I use. I've tried a ton of different primers, so I don't feel like it's a primer issue, but for some reason, neither one of these foundations ever set on my skin. They always felt like they were just sitting on top of it, sliding around. The other problem I have with both of these is no matter how much I hydrate, no matter how much I exfoliate, no matter how much moisturizer or smoothing primers or anything that I put on my face, both of these foundations will find dry patches that I didn't even know were there and cling to them. I didn't know I had dry patches on my forehead and on my chin until I used these foundations and they just like sucked into them. It was the strangest thing. From a chemistry perspective, I actually was able to chat with a chemist who formulates foundations and zillions of other beauty products. She has her own consulting firm and she was super generous about a year ago to spend a ton of time on email with me, helping me to understand how foundations in particular are formulated. Because I've always heard that there are water foundations, oil-based foundations, and then silicone-based foundations. Basically what she told me is, that's a lot of hooey. That pretty much every foundation out there is an emulsion between different kinds of silicones and silicone derivatives, dimethicones, etc., and water. And basically they do it in several different step mixing steps in order to get the foundation to kind of come together in the end and not separate in the container. That being said, Majority of foundations have water as the number one ingredient. Check me on this, pull up foundations left and right, 98% of them are going to have water as the number one ingredient. These two foundations don't. These two foundations in particular have a word that I can't pronounce, starts with a C, I'm gonna put it up on here on the screen. Um, the Makeup Forever foundation actually has this number one followed by water. And then the Wet n Wild Foundation has an ingredient called isodotacane, which is a silicone derivative, as well as this C word I can't pronounce, first, before water. So what I'm starting to notice is that when water's not the one number one ingredient, and when foundations are using, in particular, the C word, um, as one of its primary ingredients ahead of water, it doesn't work for me it sits funny on my skin and it clings to dry patches without fail. So now before I purchase any foundations, I make sure that those two ingredients aren't number one and two in the foundation. Now I have had success with those ingredients in foundations when they're further down the list. There's plenty of foundations that I've tried that I love that work for me, but they just obviously have a much lower percentage inside the overall formulation. So that was a tangent, sorry about that, but I wanted to explain maybe 
not only why these didn't work for me, but maybe a couple of things if you've struggled with foundations like this that you might wanna watch for like I am when it comes to the ingredients. I should have mentioned in the intro, I don't have a lot of these products because they haven't worked for me. So these are products that I've owned at one point and have majority of them I have decluttered at this point because they don't work for me. So I don't have a lot of show and tell. But one product that I think it's kind of polarizing, but I feel like it has more love than dislike, is the Better Than Sex Mascara from Too Faced. For me, I had real problems with this flaking all over my face um, at about the six to seven hour mark, and then also smudging. Just smudgy, smudgy, smudgy. And I say that with a caveat of, I've never tried to use it on my lower lash line. I've only ever used a waterproof mascara on my lower lash line. I've done that for years. Even when I just applied it to my upper lashes, not my lower, I would still have black smudges, especially out here in the corners of my eyes by the end of the day. I don't get it. So for the flaking and the smudging fact alone, I can't get on board with this. I love how it made my lashes look, but I just can't get past the flaking and the smudging. That's just like a total deal breaker for me. All right, another product that just hasn't worked for me is the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. I have watched a lot of different bloggers and YouTubers talk about how they have dry skin and it really does a great job of smoothing out their skin. This is a primer that has that word the C word as its number one ingredient. In fact, this primer actually has zero water in it. It is just a blend of dimethicones and silicones. All that to say, I found this really just made my skin look dry and parched. It was smoothing, but I felt like nothing ever looked right on top of it. It really made my skin feel tight and kind of dried out. I have tried it so many different times and I keep getting samples of it uh, when there's like 100 point parks and I'm like, all right, uh, clearly I didn't know what I was talking about. I'm gonna try it again. But every time I try it, I'm like, ah, oh, no, I just, I, I don't know. I can't get on board with it. It doesn't work for me, which is crazy because it is a holy grail primer for so many different people. But once again, Clearly, something with that C word just does not work well with my skin when it is the number one ingredient. Okay, so this one's probably going to be a little shocking to a lot of people, but one product I've just never gotten along well with is the Laura Mercier Setting Powder. It is a talc-based powder, as talc is its number one ingredient, and I think what I've realized maybe as I've gotten a little bit older, and maybe I would have felt differently if I was using this in my 20s, but as I've gotten a little bit older, what I've found is that talc-based setting powders, especially ones where you're gonna use them underneath your eyes, just suck the life out of my skin. I believe, if I understand just from ingredient research, that talc is the most absorbative um, of the kind of ingredients that you use to make a powder. It absorbs more moisture than anything else. So I think it's a setting powder that is gonna work incredibly well if you have oily skin. Um, and I've seen a lot of people use it to bake. I mean, so many people that I love and respect on YouTube love this powder. But for me, it just sucks the ever-loving moisture out of my skin. It makes my under eyes look dry and creepy almost immediately. It makes the rest of my skin so matte that I feel like the Sahara Desert. And I don't have dry skin. My skin is pretty normal and maybe slightly dry in the winter and slightly oily in the summer, but like, in general, I have pretty normal skin. So I don't know, for me, I just, I avoid especially loose powders that have talc as the number one ingredient. Not because I'm necessarily anti-talc, like I don't think it's gonna give me cancer, but just because it's an ingredient that just sucks too much moisture out of my skin and really just makes everything kind of dry and creepy. So I just, I can't get on board with that setting powder. Speaking of things that really dried the heck out of my under eye, the Kat Von D Locket Concealer. Oh gosh, that just, oh, it settled into every single fine line. It just sucked the life out of my under eyes. I felt like I had aged 20 years the minute I put it on. I tried everything. I tried moisturizing. I tried using just a tiny bit of it. It never worked. Now, if I had gotten a shade in that concealer that was maybe closer to my skin tone versus something that was brightening underneath my eyes, I might have been able to use it to like cover up blemishes or um, sunspots on my face, potentially. It has a lot of pigment in it, so I think it does a really good job of providing fantastic coverage, but I just couldn't get on board with it underneath my eyes. I just think it was way too drying and just, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> product that 
everyone loved this year that I also couldn't get on board with was the Wet n Wild Catsuit Liquid Lipsticks. So many people love these and swore that they weren't drying and just like raved up and down about how amazing they were. Okay, here's the true confession. I have literally bought that really popular mauve shade. I can't remember the name. Um, I'll put it on the other screen. I have bought that shade three times and decluttered it three times because in my head I'm like what am I missing? People who don't even like liquid lipstick love these and I, I don't know they just don't work for me. They settle into every lip line like they just emphasize every lip line and just suck the life out of my lips and then the other problem that I have is that they super quickly wore off around the inner part of my lips. What is the term that everyone likes to use? Butthole lips where you've got liquid lipstick that stayed on the outside but the inner part of your lip is now completely bare of product. That's what it did for me every single time within like an hour. And I don't know if I just lick my lips too much or it's a product that doesn't hold up well underneath the beverages that I'm drinking. I I don't know, but I couldn't get it to work. And it's funny, I've seen a lot of people talk about how they love it and they put a gloss over the top of it and they love it and they put a balm over the top of it and they love it and they top it with a lipstick. And I'm like, but, I... and listen, if you do that and you love that, that's great. Um, but for me, I'm wearing a liquid lipstick because I want it to last a long time. And the minute you, I put any sort of lip gloss or balm over the top of it, that staying power is gone. I might as well have just put on a regular lipstick. So for me, I'm not going to buy a liquid lipstick that requires me to put a gloss over the top of it in order to make it comfortable. That's just, I don't know, that doesn't, that doesn't float my boat as it were. So all that to say, I just don't love those wet and wild cat suits that everybody and their mother absolutely adores. I don't know, I just can't help it. Another product, and I actually have this one here. I have heard so many people talk about their love of the ColourPop gel liners. So these are the liners, not the lip liners, but the ones for your eye. I, I don't know if I'm just getting bad batches or if I'm getting old products. I have literally bought the shade Mr. Bang because this is one of Kathleen Light's shades. I have bought this three separate times thinking, all right, well, maybe I just got one that had been in the warehouse for too long or got dried out in shipping. In general, I find these to be incredibly dry. They're one of those formulas that just tug on my eyelids. And I watch Kathleen and other people talk about the fact that they are creamy and they just glide on. And I'm like, what? I'm so confused. But the other thing that I've noticed is that they're so dry that when I attempt to use them, the tip is frequently breaking off. So what's happening is like the top part, I'll have it up just a little bit and it'll snap off. As I'm putting it on, the top part just breaks off because it's dry. I don't know. I love the shade Mr. Bing. I love the tone of it. Um, I've tried other colors as well and I just can't get these to work for me. I don't know. I don't get it. Another eye product that everyone went gaga over. And when it came out, I told myself, I, you don't really like that. You don't really need it. Um, it's not really gonna call to you. And then I watched so many people, this is the power of YouTube, right? You watch so many people talk about this product, people that you trust, people who bought it themselves and didn't get it sent to NPR and they love it and they love it and they love it. And so finally you break down and you get it. And then you're like, I don't love it. <laughs> like, and that is the Urban Decay Naked Ultimate Basics. So I have two issues with this. One, and this is probably the bigger issue for me, I don't understand why they put the colors in here that they did. There are two shades in here that are just so freaking similar that I'm like, come on, couldn't we have done something else? The shade Commando and Tempted here at the top, they are so similar. Like, come on, let's put have, let's put have put something else in. And then the shade Faith and Lockout, same thing. I didn't need both of these. I'm very uninspired by the colors that Urban Decay chose to put in here. And then on top of that, I think the formula is just okay. Like. There are just so many other matte eyeshadow formulas that I prefer to this. I talked myself into it and then it was everything that I thought it was going to be. I don't know, this is probably one of the more disappointing products I've bought, mostly because I kick myself every time I look at it because I'm like, you knew you didn't want it. You knew you didn't think you were gonna like it. And you went and you spent 50 plus bucks on it anyway. I don't know, this is probably one I need to rehome and see if I can find a friend uh, that is gonna enjoy it more. And the last product I wanted to touch on is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Highlighter. Now, I 
watched so many people rave, rave, rave about these. And once again, people that I trust, people that I love. And so I went to the store and I swatched it on my hand and I thought, oh, that's really pretty, right? So you, you, you do what you do when you go into Sephora and you swirl your finger in it and you put it on your hand and you're like, ooh, okay, I get it. So I purchased this and I come home and I sit in front of my mirror and I put it on and I'm like, why all the glitter? Like, there's way more glitter in here than I ever realized. And I, I will admit, I'm a glitter hater. Like, that's not entirely true. I love it on my eyes. I don't want it on my face. Like, I don't want to look at my highlighter and see glitter. It is my biggest pet peeve. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm not in the 90s going to a club. I just, I don't know. I know a lot of people love highlighters that have a little bit of glitter in them. And you know what, to each their own. And I watch people who put them on and I'm think, oh gosh, that's actually really pretty. In fact, I just watched a video from Alyssa Ashley where she used the new, uh, what are they, the Cover FX glitter drops. And she put them on her face and I was like, oh, it's so pretty on you. And, I, and, and in my head, I'm like, you hate glitter on your face. But then I'm also like, ooh, maybe I should buy those and put them on my face. Anyway, tangent aside. That Tarte Amazonian highlighter has a lot more glitter in it than you realize when you're swatching it with your finger um, and underneath kind of crappy stored lighting. I was not a fan. The first time I went out in natural daylight, I was like, oh, chunky glitter all over my cheeks. So that was actually one of the few purchases that I've bought that actually went back to the store the next day and I actually returned. So I don't know. Not a fan. So that wraps it up for the top 10 products that I absolutely dislike that everybody else and their mother seems to love. I hope you guys enjoyed both of these videos. If you didn't see my loves video that everyone hates, I will list, I will link that rather down below. I'm also going to link below some of the YouTubers who I've seen do this tag, who I've thoroughly enjoyed watching. Hopefully you will check out their channels as well. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.